Hi Keith here from Academy of Bass, thanks for joining me. Today I'm looking at an iconic pop bass line that's packed full of musical gems. It's a brilliant bass line and when you learn it, it's absolutely going to help you play better bass. That was the bass line to Footloose, the title song of the movie soundtrack. Released in 1984, it was sung by Kenny Loggins and it was a chart hit everywhere. The bass player is studio legend Nathan East. Now this is a masterclass in how to play over chords, how to use pentatonic scales, how to play great fills and runs, but it can also be quite demanding in terms of the techniques used. And as I get into it, you're gonna see that it also uses the whole range of the instrument. It really is a brilliant bass line. But at its heart, it's actually quite simple harmonically speaking. It's the chorus that I'm going to focus all of my attention on because that's where all of the action happens and it's played over just two chords, A and D. Now everything that I'm about to show you is in the free PDF of the lesson. The bass lines are notated in both standard notation and tab and I've also included a copy of the backing track that I'm using as part of that download too. Please feel free to support the channel by subscribing. If you enjoy the lesson, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to give me a shout out and say hi in the comments. I always do my best to answer every comment because it's always great to hear from you. The bass line opens with this. I'm playing over an A chord and I'm bouncing off the root note, but I'm playing that root note as an open string. And that's a common thread that you're going to see and hear throughout this bass line. Using the open strings is really helping me play this line consistently, but it also creates a great feel and lots of movement throughout this bass line. So we've got A, the root note, played twice, then we've got F sharp, the sixth, and we jump back down to the root note. Now, the sixth is a great note to play over any major chord. It's really sweet sounding. From there we get this. G, the flat and seventh, back down to the root. Now the G, the flat and seventh, is a really bluesy sound. So I think the bass player is treating this A chord as an A7 chord, an A dominant seven chord. If you're not sure what that is, we've got root third and fifth, the major chord, with a flat and seventh, A, C sharp, E, G. So this gives us this. Then we've got a hammer on from F sharp to G. That leads into this. G hammering on to A. The next chord is D and we've got a really nice pentatonic line. So again, I'm using the open string for consistency and this time we get D, F, the flattened third, hammering onto F sharp, the major third. So we've got this great little motif, really bluesy sounding and it's iconic. It's used everywhere in every single style of music. I've done a bunch of different lessons featuring that motif. So I'll post a link to one or two in the description below. Feel free to check them out. So we've got D, F hammering onto F sharp, then we've got A the fifth, onto B the sixth, and then we pull off onto A, so we've got another new technique. Now I'm playing that using an open string, but you can play this line using a couple of different fingerings. You can start from the second finger. There are many blues bass lines that use that fingering, but you can also start from the first finger. going to talk a little bit more about that fingering in just a minute. Then we're on to A and we play exactly the same line but over A. So now we've got this. And I'm being really careful with my picking hand, particularly the anchor. So I'm anchoring on the E string when I play the opening line. I'm obviously plucking the open A string and all of the other notes that I'm playing are on the D string. So the E, A and D string are fully muted. My fretting hand is muting the G string. So there's no chance of any unwanted ringing noise. When I play D, I move my anchor to the A string. So this time I've got the A, D and G string covered and my thumb is muting the E string. So again, no noise, and when I jump down to A, I'm moving back down to the E string. So we get this. Move, move back. From there, we repeat the first line. And the second, 
And then we've got this little bluesy run. Great sounding line, it's over an A, and it's pretty much an A pentatonic scale, but we start from C, C's the flat and third, again that bluesy sound. Then we get B, A, F sharp, E, C sharp, the major third, but an octave lower, B. That's just a major pentatonic scale. Now you can play that in a few different ways. You can pluck every note. But I like to play it like this. So I like to slide into the C, pull off onto the B, and pull off onto the A. So we've got a new technique, and it just makes it sound a little bit more juicy. Now, this line that we played before it, this D line, I did say you could play it in a couple of places, and I've actually seen a video of Nathan East playing this, but he plays it from here, starting with the first finger. He plays this. Then he plays the bluesy line up here. So from the 10th fret of the D string. I'm not sure if he plays it like this all the way through the bass line. I can't tell, but I like playing it with the open strings because that helps me play it with a little bit more consistency. Then we carry on. Then we've got this line. So we're on a D chord, we've got D the root note, C the flat and seventh, B the sixth, so again we've got this common recurring theme of using the flat and seventh and the sixth. Then we've got B flat because that leads chromatically into the next chord A. Now I play this line a little bit differently, so I play it using an open string. Open D, then I move my hand, then we're on to this. So it's an A chord, and again we're bouncing off a note, but this time it's not the root note, it's the fifth. So we've got A the root note to E the fifth, then we've got F sharp the sixth, bouncing back onto the E, G the flat and seventh, bouncing back onto the E, and G sharp the natural or the major seventh, bouncing back onto the E. Now I'm playing this using a one finger perfect fretting technique, but you could play it with one finger. So this whole line is this, open a string, now we're into the last line and we're back to the A riff, and to answer that we've got this, so we've got A, the root note of the octave, G, the flat and seventh, pulling off onto F sharp the sixth. E the fifth, and then we've got C the flat and third onto C sharp the major third. So we've got this little bluesy motif. And then we finish by playing root notes. So we've got G because the chord changes, D, D, A. So if I play that line really slowly for you now, it sounds like this. pretty much the chorus bass line but with each new pass there's some ad-libbing and improvising going on but there's a full transcription of exactly what's being played in the PDF so make sure you grab a copy of that. A little bit later on we get this really great fill. That's played over an A chord and it's just an A major pentatonic scale. C sharp, E, F sharp, E, C sharp, B, A, F sharp and E. But I like to play it like this. Sliding into the C sharp, E, F sharp, pull off from there to the E, F sharp, B, slide into the A, F sharp and E. But when Nathan East plays it, I'm pretty sure he plays it like this. Starts from D. 
makes it nice and easy to play that line. But I like using the open strings. A little bit later on, we get this killer run. Sounds great. Starts over a D chord and the descending line is this A, G, F sharp and F. So there's not a single D root note in sight. And for a long time, I thought it was just a descending octave line. But it's a little bit more than that. So we start from A, play the octave. From there, we slide down to G octave, down to the G root note, slide into the F sharp root note, play the octave, slide into the F octave, down to the root note. We've got E, open E, now we're into an A chord, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. That's great, it's almost like a walking bass line. So here's the whole line really slowly. Sounds great, but it's tough to play. So this bass line's pretty much got a little bit of everything in it. To start off with, it's incredibly melodic, so it's very memorable. It's composed using a constant stream of eighth notes, uses lots of open strings, and bounces off the root note of each chord. Harmonically, it uses chord arpeggios, pentatonic scales, there's some great fills and runs, chromatic lines, and there's also a liberal dose of octaves too. But it also uses a ton of different playing techniques, muting, hammer-ons, pull-offs and slides so if ever there was a bass line that could help knock your playing into shape this is it i really do hope that you've enjoyed this lesson if you have give me a shout out and let me know in the comments make sure you grab the pdf the link to that is posted below thanks for joining me and i'll see you next time